G'day everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at the role of the trainee and what it means to be a good trainee. So I guess the first question to ask is, what even is a trainee judge? A trainee judge is a very common thing you'll see, particularly at Easters, but also at lots of other tournaments as well. And it basically just means someone who is pretty new to judging, who doesn't quite, you know, know what's going on yet or isn't quite, or isn't a particularly strong judge yet and the emphasis is on the word yet because everyone starts out as a trainee and it's through practice and experience that we get better so it's not an insult it's not a tag of shame it just means that you're there learning and that you're there taking on feedback you still judge the debate you still participate in the discussions but if it comes down to a vote your your, your vote or your say wouldn't be counted and quite often trainees through the process of being a trainee getting feedback from judges move up and become panelists, sometimes even chairs, and sometimes even break at tournaments. So, no shame in being a trainee. But what is your role as a trainee in that panel discussion then when you can't actually vote? I think the first role you have is to learn. You're there uh, as a trainee, particularly at Easter's when a lot of judges are, are brand new or just out of high school, is to learn about how to judge and to learn about how to debate and to take on that feedback and experience from the more experienced chairs will be there to explain to you how it works and show you how things, uh, how things operate. So you should also um, uh, still be involved in the discussion as well. And what does that mean? It means that you as a trainee will still need to judge the debate. So you need to come up with a call or a decision, like who you think won the debate, and you want to have some reasons why you think they won the debate. Um, it is preferable if those, if those um, uh, reasons are shaped under like themes or issues of the debate, but again, those are things you work on improving if you haven't got to that stage already. And I advise you to check out our other videos on, on coming up with issues and things about how to judge the debate. It also means that like you've got to be open when you don't quite have a result. So you won't have a whole lot of time after the debate to come to a decision. Uh, adjudicating debate should be a process that happens like it's an ongoing thing throughout the debate. But sometimes you get to the end, you'll have three or four minutes to think about the result and you, you just won't know the answer. And that's okay. It's okay to say... Uh, I, I'm sorry, Chair, uh, I don't have a clear result. I think negative is winning the debate, um, but I'm just not sure about this thing here, or this argument or this rebuttal or what to think about this issue. And that's okay. So at least then you're identifying where you think there's a point of clash or confusion in the debate, and that's still important to identify. So try and have a call and try and have reasons if you can, but be honest and okay if you don't have that, so that way the Chair can best sort of lead the discussion and help you find an answer to that question. Uh, the second thing you should be doing as a trainee, I guess tip number two, is participate in the discussion. Answer the chair's questions. Provide reasons when asked, you know, and, and ask your own questions there. And I think for, for, for that element, I would also suggest watching the video uh, on, on how to be a good panellist, because the roles are quite similar in that respect about how you engage with the chair and how you engage with the discussion. A uh, bit of self-promotion there. Watch, number, watch the other video. Uh, tip number three, and this I think is a really important thing for, for, for new judges, and old judges too, because sometimes we always get it wrong, uh, is to, when you're saying a team won an issue or won a debate or you found something compelling, don't just defer to things like, well, I, well, I bought this argument, because arguments are unfortunately uh, not for sale. Uh, you have to give reasons why things are true. So you should be always thinking to yourself, all right, I, I think negative wins this issue. What evidence from the debate can I use to support that? Was it their really compelling rebuttal? Was it this excellent argument they made? Or was it this like tactical flaw from affirmative? Sometimes it's all three, sometimes it's one or two. And have those ready uh, to support your, 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 your conclusions uh, and, and your issues. And the same way you do with the debate. Whenever you're giving a speech, you have a couple of reasons to support the claim that you're making. The same thing is true um, of adjudication. But your reasons and evidence has to come from what the speaker said, not from your own personal beliefs or things you've made up or things you think they said, but things they've actually said. And that's why note-taking is particularly important, so you can refer back to those reasons. So if the judge asks you why you believe this, try and have some reasons ready. The fourth tip I'd say is ask lots of questions. The, point, the purpose is to learn and to try and become a better judge. So ask questions about the debate. Ask questions about how the judge takes their notes and whether that could be something useful for you. Ask them questions about judging more generally, about tips they have for improvement. Chairs should be there to help you develop as well, uh, as much as they are there to help the teams develop. So please do ask those questions and try and get information uh, from those chairs about how they think you can improve. And, and, and tip number five is just enjoy the experience. Um, I think it's, it's excellent to be able to go to a debating tournament and judge, judge debates and see these, the, you know, these intellectual arguments getting thrown around. So make sure you're having fun while you're doing it as well and really soak in 
or, or all that experience. And importantly, let the Edge Core know if that didn't happen. So if that didn't happen because a chair has been rude to you or ignored you or, or, or been mean to you, you know, write that in feedback, let the Edge Core know because that is an example of, of quite bad chairing. So then in this video, the role and purpose of a trainee is to learn, but to also actively participate in the discussions even if they can't have a vote because that will help you actually learn. So make sure you participate, you answer questions, you have reasons to support your adjudication and your decisions, you ask lots of questions and you have fun. So, so best of luck to all our new judges at Easters this year who are going to be starting for trainees and uh, best of luck for, you know, hopefully being promoted to panellists over the course or even chair uh, over the course of the tournament.